Do you struggle returning big kick serves just like these? Look at that kicker. That's a good serve. That's so high. So that's just a tough scenario, especially if you have a one-handed backhand. Somebody with a big kick serve is targeting that backhand, or it could be your forehand too. It's really tough. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you the technique, the strategy, the mindset around how to be successful and return that big kick serve, even when it is super difficult. So first things first, let's talk about mindset really quickly. If the serve is the most important shot in tennis, which many people say that it is, then the return certainly is the second most important shot. A lot of times I like to tell students that if you miss a return, it's kind of like double faulting. Your opponent doesn't even have to play a point. So minimizing errors is critical just to get into rallies and exchanges and have a shot in each individual point. And the first most important thing to understand when it comes to making those returns is having the right mindset when it comes to the three phases of play in tennis. These are the three phases of play. I, I'm sure conceptually you've already thought about this, but it's important to have it in mind as kind of a key principle when it comes to tennis. Offense, neutral, defense. A good server is going to be trying to put themselves on offense right out of the gate with their very first shot. It might be through power, it might be through placement, it might be through spin, like on a good kick serve. Neutral means that nobody has the upper hand. Neither player has hit a fantastic shot. You're both on even ground. And defense means that somebody's in trouble and they're struggling a little bit and they're in a tough situation. So a good server is trying to put you on defense and they're trying to be in offense. And one of the biggest mistakes you can make when your opponent is trying to put you on defense is to try to respond with offense. If your opponent hits a great shot, like a kick serve, and it gets it up out of your strike zone in a difficult, uncomfortable position, the worst thing you could do is try to hit a winner. So try to just go for broke. Because most points in tennis end with somebody making a mistake. So if your opponent has a great kick serve and you're trying to hit a winning shot, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes and your opponent's probably gonna win pretty easily. So case in point, let's go back to that match we were just looking at as a case study and listen to the mindset of Will after those first couple big kick serves that he saw against Mike. Keep in there, keep pushing the returns. Like, I mean, I'm not hit one, one rolling return so far, and I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing because why change what works? I'm getting into the rallies, I'm not being you know, overly aggressive, but I'm staying on these fast balls and these fast courts. So after experiencing Mike's big kick serve a couple times and in the first return game that he had, Will kind of changed his mentality. When he says roll, he's talking about hitting a topspin return. And when he says push, push the return in, he's talking about a block or a backspin return of serve. So after experiencing the big kick and trying to roll it unsuccessfully, he, he realizes very correctly that I need to just, I gotta get the ball in play. If I can't get the point started, then what's the point? Like Mike's just gonna hold easy every single game. So here's what that started to look like after he made that mindset shift. Come on, baby. So as you watch through these, I want you to keep in mind that concept of, of neutralizing. Mike is trying to go on offense, and now Will's mindset has kind of shifted away a little bit from attacking back with the topspin or trying to hit you know, a good shot that maybe puts him a little bit at the advantage in the point. And he shifted his mindset into neutralization. How can I neutralize? With that in mind specifically, watch what he's doing here with these returns. Nice kicker. Good return. Hey. I like how he goes to his forehand there. Hey. And now we're going. Hey. Oh, okay. The Craigslist kicker. Hey. Yep. Yep. Hey. Oh, here's the heel cross. So, perfect example with this last point here. Will gets put in a really tough situation here. He has to jump, and the ball is still above eye height. He's off the ground here. Really impressive uh, serve from, from Mike, by the way. Will's off the ground and the ball is still above eye height, but because he plays it relatively safe and is smart enough to hit the right height and the right depth, everything becomes neutralized. So Will places the ball a couple feet from the baseline on the other side, and sure, this isn't putting Mike in trouble, but that's not the point. The point here is let's get into the point. 
If Will tries to be a hero and blast away like Shapovalov on a, a high jumping one handed backhand, Will's smart enough to know that he's going to end up beating himself relatively quickly. So this is a perfect example of neutralizing. And then they get into the rally. And then it's a matter of who can work the point the best. Nice. Now notice, even though Will's mindset here is to neutralize, he just outright won the point. When you just hit the ball back in play and you don't give your opponent an easy shot, but you're not necessarily trying to hit like a really impressive, big, fancy, highlight, real kind of winner either, sometimes they'll just outright win, which is fantastic without even having to do anything else. And here's a, a couple more examples of that. Right now, let's go. Come on. Oh, it's so tense. Reading him. Good return. So Will has gone from initially in the match trying to, as he said, roll or come over the top of the ball or hit topspin, drive the ball. And upon having a lot of trouble with the height of the big kicker, he's taken things down a notch with the offense neutral defense. He, he's taken his mindset from slightly offensive. It's not necessarily that he was trying to hit a winner, but he was trying to hit a solid shot. And instead he changed his mindset back to let's block it. Let's, he, as he said, push it back in play. And he had a lot of success with this in the match. Let's break down his technique on one of these and see exactly what he's doing to neutralize this tough serve and put it back in play. So he's moving forwards as he makes a split step. Split step super key on the return of serve. And then he's making a unit turn and bringing the racket up just a little bit above the height he's going to make contact. So that as he makes contact, his racket is traveling downwards through the point of contact with a slightly open racket face. At contact, his racket open means angled upwards just a little bit. It's angled upwards maybe 5 or 10 degrees or so. So what that does, the combination of the downward path and the slightly open racket face does two things. The downward path gives the ball backspin, which makes it easier to control the depth of the shot and also it makes the ball kind of hang and float a little bit, so it gives Will lots of time to recover and get ready for the next shot. And the open racket face helps him avoid the net, make sure that everything clears, and he gives himself plenty of margin or opportunity to make the shot. So combining those two things makes him look downright casual getting ready for the next shot and the point. And so because he's placed it deep enough due to the height and the backspin, and he's given himself time because of the height and the backspin, he's just making a casual split step, and the two of them are right there in the middle of the court. So that, those are the technical cues or keys that are super critical to neutralizing a tough kick serve using the, as he said, push or block or slice, whatever you want to call it, or just chipping, there's another word, you're just chipping it back in place, slightly open face, downward path, He's using a continental grip and keeping it very calm and simple. The keys here are the height and the depth and the backspin. If you don't check all those boxes, then here's what ends up happening against a good player. Ooh, nice. Ooh, on, what a shot. Wow. Wow. So a really nice kick serve again that jumped into the body of Will. Will does his best here to block and neutralize, but it catches him in an awkward position and so he doesn't get the height and he doesn't get the depth that he wants. The previous examples that we looked at, the ball was landing within a couple feet of the baseline, at, at least ha kind of halfway between the, the baseline and the service line. This one lands right on top of the service line, which means a good player like Mike has the opportunity to transition forwards and break into the offensive phase of play. So now he's in attack mode and that's exactly what Will doesn't want. Will has not neutralized the rally, and Mike has the opportunity to close forwards. So this is why checking all those boxes, the open racket face, uh, the downward path, the, sim the simplicity and just kind of the calmness, and then just finding the right angle so you get the right height, you get the right depth. That's why this is so, so critical. So you actually do neutralize instead of giving that good server an attacking opportunity. 
Now, if you'd rather drive this return and, and hit topspin or come over the top of it or, or roll it as Will said, whatever you want to call it, you can totally do that too. And here's what, here's what it looks like. Will did successfully do that several times. Hey, 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 cross. Hey, 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 cross. Hey. So notice how Will is stepping forwards and taking it early. He's anticipating the jump on that kick serve. Again, having to leave the court and now coming upwards towards contact. That's the key difference between slice and topspin. On slice or that block, that push that he, he described it as, he was coming down through contact. On this shot, he's raising the racket through contact. So what that does is it spins the ball or rolls the ball forwards. It gives it topspin and that creates a dip that brings the ball back down into the court on the other side. This takes more skill, in my opinion, slightly better timing, a little bit more athleticism to keep the racket flat and square. That's the other main difference between slice and topspin is we want the racket to be flat at contact instead of slightly open so that the racket, so the ball doesn't uh, sky and fly too far and, and go deep past the baseline on the other side. So he's keeping the racket face square and raising the racket at contact. And that takes a little bit more skill and talent to do against a tough serve. So these examples, he neutralized it. And here's what happens when you're off a little bit with the angle of your racket or you don't quite lift the ball enough to give yourself the height you need to get the ball deep in the court. So that time, he left it short. Again, he stepped forwards, took it early. The racket was coming up through contact with a square racket face, but he either mishit it a little bit or the angle of his racket was a little bit too closed. And so he just didn't get the depth and the height that he wanted. And again, the ball ends up landing around the service line. And that's just kind of feast mode for Mike on the other side, who loves to come forwards to the net. And so it allows him to transition into offense and attack and put Will on defense in a tough spot. So whether you decide to block the kick serve or drive the kick serve, hit backspin or hit topspin, the height and the depth are super, super key. You can totally be successful either way. In my opinion, the topspin variety takes a little bit more skill and talent and practice, a little bit higher quality mechanics in order to do it that way. The block is easier. And I think it tends to have kind of a bad rap, like you're like chickening out or it's like the weaker option of the two. Sure, it doesn't give you as much opportunity to attack, but you, we saw in the examples here from Will that frequently he just outright won the points anyway, even though he was just trying to push the ball back in play, as he said it. Bottom line, at the end of the day, the big objective here is to neutralize the return. So if you feel you can do that, that best with a drive or a topspin shot, do it like that. If you make too many errors that way, you have to be very honest with yourself and objective. If you make too many errors trying to block it, or I'm sorry, drive it or hit topspin, then you should go to the block or the chip or the backspin, whatever you want to call it. That's a little bit easier, easier to put in play, easier to neutralize, and you can get on your way into the rest of the point. Hopefully these examples were helpful. If you'd like some guidance on how you can learn how to hit an effective slice, hit an effective topspin shot, then make sure to get a free access at Essential Tennis Academy. Dot com, where there's thousands of lessons that'll show you how to hit every shot in tennis. If you enjoyed this lesson, do me a favor and click the like button. Leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.